pray for you already in the name of jesus christ may the grace that lifts may the grace that announces let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now you are welcome to believers global tv beloved in christ i implore you not to miss this important message you are about to listen to it is not by accident that you are here on this channel right now I strongly believe that there is something God is about to do in your life through this teaching and that is why I encourage you to listen to the end. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Today is a day of divine favor and testimony. Stay to the end. Don't go away. God bless you. I said it is the Rema word of God. The Rema word. The Rema word. This is the first system that brings about restoration. It doesn't matter what you have gone through. It doesn't matter what is happening to you. If you can receive the Rema word, God can bring you out of the pit. That is one of God's system of provoking restoration. If you study Psalm 107 from verse 17 to 20, you are going to see a people that produce that created destruction for themselves. This one self-destruct. Yet the Rema word was able to help them. Psalm 107, verse 17. Quickly, let, let's read some scriptures. He said, Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquity, are afflicted. Hope you know who a fool is. The Bible says, a fool says in his heart, there's no God. So it's a man who is godless. He said, because of their what? Transgressions and because of their iniquity, they brought afflictions and infirmities upon themselves. Verse 18, he said, their soul abhorred all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gate of death. So these people, they were the ones creating their own havoc. Yet, they could be helped. So a man can be under affliction by demons and he can bring affliction upon himself. But it doesn't matter the source of the affliction. In verse 20, hear what the Bible said. It said, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. So, regardless of the source of your calamity, the moment you receive the sent word, your life can change. Calamities can be sponsored by your foolishness, it can be sponsored by the system that you are in, and it can be sponsored by devils and demons. It doesn't matter. The word is superior to all of that realm. This is what God is showing us. This is why anybody who wants to enjoy a restoration must understand how to receive the word of God. There's a way to receive the sent word. Look at Joseph, for example. In Psalm 105, verse 17, the guy was in prison. The Bible said they kept him in fetters. They kept him in fetters. That's not just chain. Those are the type of chain that have meta. There's a matter in between and you are locked. You can't as much as close your legs. So you move. You are really in bondage. But the Bible said, until the time that his word came, he said the word of the Lord tried him. Go to verse 18. Whose feet were sought in fetters and they laid him in iron. Verse 19. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. See what began to happen. So you are permitted to be in your affliction until the word comes. If the word has not come, then nothing really will happen to you. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. That means the seasons that he was going through those afflictions, God was watching him to see where his loyalty will deal to. But the guy stood his ground. That was when the word came to him. And then verse 20, he said, The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. So the first thing that happened to him was freedom. But it was not just freedom. There has to be restoration. You can't free a man who has lost 14 years. Where will he start from? There are certain freedoms that are bondage. Imagine they put somebody in prison in 2010 or 2000 and, or 1994 and then 30 years later, they say you are free, go. He will come out, he see internet, he see handset. When he entered prison, there was no handset. Those who entered prison when they were sending letters, he entered prison when there was no internet. They were using fax and all of those things. Now you release him 
when internet has come, people are not just using phone. AI has been created. You say you are free. How will he enter the world and be relevant? So when you free somebody, there has to be restoration. So that the things that are lost are brought back. And see what the Lord did. He said the king let him go free. Verse 21. He made him. This is where restoration comes. Lord of his house. Ruler of all his substance. Verse 22. To bind his princes at his pleasure. And to teach his senators wisdom. So by this time. Those who were in politics 20 years before. They have become senators. They didn't go and left him behind. The guy is now their commander. So this is how restoration works. Everything you should have had. God will bring it back to you. But the key is the word. He sent his word. The problem is that most of us don't know how to receive the word. This is why we are not enjoying restoration. There are a few ways in scriptures of receiving the sent words. I give you some of them very quickly. Number one is by waiting upon the Lord. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. He said, I will stand upon my watch and I will wait to see what he will say to me. And he said, write the vision. Many don't know how to wait. Waiting is not prayer. Waiting is not meditation. Waiting is what you do after you have prayed. Waiting is what you do after you have meditated. There are many people who read 10 chapters of the Bible every day. They don't hear nothing from God. There are many people who pray for 7 hours every day. They don't hear anything from God. You know why? When they are done praying, after they have charged, they step out and go. And that's when the Holy Ghost wants to speak. But those who have understanding, after they've engaged their spirit, and the spirit has become silent, then they wait upon the Lord. Waiting is to focus all your attention on Him, if He will say something. And focusing in this context is not to keep quiet and close your eye. It's to silence the noise of your soul through spiritual engagement. Either prayer, either worship, either study, or fasting. By the time your spirit has become quiet, you are not thinking of house rent. You are not thinking of sin. You are no longer anxious. Then you discover that you are ready to receive the word. That's why I said be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4, 6. He said by prayer and meditation with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. God didn't come to answer your request first. He said the peace of God that surpasses knowledge will garrison your heart. So God prepares your heart so that you can receive the word. The answer comes when the word comes. So a man who waits is a man who can receive the word. So he said, I will stand upon my watch to see what he will say to me. The second way to receive the proceeding word is by, 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 by receiving it with joy. When you are studying, you are joyful. You are expectant. You are hopeful. You are waiting with excitement. See, there are many people who don't know how to receive. Even when God is talking, they are moody. And because they are moody, they are easily distracted. But a man who receives from God is a man whose spirit is alive. He's alive. And you can train your spirit. You can train your spirit. It doesn't just happen to people. See this worship that just finished. Some people stood like this till the worship finished. They were doing like this. So they will come to church. They service, they prayed, they worship, they heard the word. Nothing happened to them. And they are wondering why are people were so acting as if something happened because for them until their emotion is touched nothing has happened those are babes we don't wait for our emotions to be touched the man of god was singing and he said there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only yeshua have heard my message that means no mountain can stop me that means no, no throne can stop me he has given me a message because he said that my spirit up and I begin to shout no mountain can stop me no throne can stop me as I'm doing that after a while my spirit comes alive he said with joy shall ye draw out waters from the wells of salvation Isaiah 12 verse 3 so but some people don't know how these things work they are waiting for their emotions to be taught they may sing songs for two hours no one will touch your emotion but a spiritual man hears what God is saying and as he's hearing it, he's educating his spirit to respond accordingly. Because if you don't do it with joy, the word can't come to you. The word can't come. So the second way to catch the word is to keep your spirit charged and excited. With joy, you draw waters. So even the word is not coming, you draw it. Number three, how do you receive the word? With meekness. Meekness. In James chapter 1 verse 21, 
the Bible said to receive the engrafted word with meekness. Some people are so high-minded. They are in church. They are conscious. They want people to know they are here. When people are worshiping God, they are, they are conscious about their dress. They are keeping their comportment and they distract themselves out of God's word, out of God's presence. When you come before God, be mindful. There's only one king. He's the one. Every one of us are servants. And so you humble yourself. What will you say to me? Who will you use to speak to me? You mustn't even wait until the apostles, apostle comes. Some people come to God's presence. The moment the person they think qualifies to talk to them is not around. They lock their spirit. But a mighty prophet was corrected by an animal, a donkey. God can use a donkey to talk. The reason most of us are not receiving the word is because we are high-minded. It takes a lot of meekness and humility to receive the word. When you come here, a boy can be leading prayer. That will be your word. He will quote one scripture and that is the answer to your crisis. Somebody can be leading worship. That's where your word will come. But if you are high-minded, you will be waiting. It's only when the apostle comes that he can speak to me. At this level, uh, it's not everybody that can... Um, I'm not proud, but you see, it takes you, you have to enter some depths of the things of the spirit before you can talk to, you know, um, there are places where we draw from. <laughs> and the Bible told us to be careful, to be careful, so that the serpent, through his subtlety, will not beguile us as he did Eve simple things can bless you this is why in this generation everybody wants to talk high sounding things because you cannot come and read bible verse now and explain it come here and say for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten so they say where well, talk now man of god when it, where's the message this is ah uh, this one is not uh meanwhile they don't know it because if you knew it you'll be free so many people don't know john 3 16 till now that's why they are still struggling with masturbation. That's why they are still struggling with poverty. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if you are still struggling and you are not living the fullness of life. It means you have not known John 3.16. Because thou shalt know the truth. Not to quote it. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The proof that you know the truth is liberty. And if you go back to those scriptures. Some people will be so offended that you are, you are wasting their time meekness humility brokenness that's how you receive the word number four how do you receive the word with reverence tremble at the word of god when god is talking pay all attention you can't stand and your governor is talking and you are chatting can you do that your governor can be talking to you and you are chewing gum but in church people do all kinds of things even when they are praying they are chatting they are praying, they are distracted because they have no reverence. And because you don't have reverence, God will not speak to you. The Bible said in Psalm 24 verse 14, it said the secrets of God are with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. So if you don't have fear for God, you can't receive the word. I'm telling you why many are not enjoying restoration. Because restoration is sponsored by the Rema word. Finally, you receive the word by waiting. He's a king. You can't rush him to talk to you. You wait for him to speak to you. You wait for him. I will stand upon my watch. Habakkuk 2 1. And I will wait to see what he will say to me. If you wait, God will talk. If you are in a hurry, he will look for those who are waiting. And most of us are in a hurry. That's why God never speaks. You can't pressure him to talk. You wait for him to talk. And when he speaks, he says, You mount up with wings like the eagles. You begin to run. You are not weary. You walk. You don't faint. Because that word comes not just to inform you but to change your story. So the first way to receive restoration is by the Rema word, the spoken word of God. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he is not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went. 
But the one who says he was not going to go, at a point he thought within himself and said, my father has been very responsible for me, so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you listen, and probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies, and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone. It is more of what you take out of th those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better. So I do hope and I pray that this message will transform your life, will turn your life around.